Major Cat, backyard explorer extraordinaire. Tally ho! Tally ho! Hi, everybody. I'm Ava. I'm a youth camp counselor and program volunteer here at Five Rivers Metro Parks. Welcome to Nature Cat Camp, where we virtually explore our local parks and challenge you to explore the nature right outside your window. We have a fun day at camp planned for you, so let's get started. Are you ready? Everybody say, tally ho! No matter where you live, in the city, suburbs, or out in the country, you probably have a forested area someplace close. In our region, no matter where you live, Five Rivers Metro Parks makes it easy to explore forests with 18 different parks to visit. So a forest is a piece of land with lots of trees. Many animals need forests to live and survive. Forests are very important and grow in almost every part of the world. They are an ecosystem which includes lots of different plants and animals. What's an ecosystem, you may be asking? To answer that, let's check in with our friend Jesse. He's a ranger with the US Forest Service and he is going to help explain what an ecosystem is. You may remember in a previous nature camp, we explored nature in the city. Well, today we are going to explore a city in nature. Let's check it out. Today we're on a mission for plum. We're going to see how lots of different animals live together in the forest. Welcome to the forest. This is a forest area. It's actually in the city. And this is where plants and animals live. This is the city that plants, animals, and insects live in. Imagine the tall trees as buildings where animals live and work. Jesse is a forest ranger for the U.S. Forest Service. My name is Henry, and I'm here with Zuzu, David, Mira, Tessa, and their dad, Elon. Plum and the kids were basically exploring a jungle. Which is a special kind of forest called a rainforest. And we're in a forest too, a New England forest. We learned about how the forest is different from the jungle and how it's similar. There are a lot of trees in a jungle, and there are a lot of trees here. In a jungle, there's activity up in the tops of the trees, and there's a lot happening in the tops of the trees here that we don't see right away. Did you see any signs of animals in the tree canopy? I saw some holes in the leaves that are probably made by inchworms. I saw a chipmunk. So let's take a look at this log. Even though it looks like it's dead, it's actually full of life. Come on in close. I found a few holes. Those holes were created by insects that were feeding on the wood and helping this tree to decompose. The animals, they kind of make these logs and these trees their home. They're like apartment buildings for insects. When we look down there, we see spider webs in the dark. There are some spiders. The spiders are hoping to catch some of those insects. It looks like coral, and I think it's fungus. It's kind of surprising. It's very soft and very smooth, too. Look what's crawling around on the colorful fungus. Oh, wow, that is nice. Look at the little fruit flies. I'm going to draw a picture of this for Plum. We're collecting data because we want to show Plum the ecosystem of the forest. Is that a rock or is that something growing in the log? It kind of looks like a mushroom or something. I'm making a sketch for Plum so she can see this mushroomy thing. Hey, Jesse, I have a question for you. Do you think it was here before the tree fell or after? You know, I don't know. Because maybe the tree was standing dead long before it actually fell over. And the fungus is actually living off of the dead wood. I think it's important to learn about nature and the environment because it helps people understand nature better. Nature is basically a part of us. Nature really is part of us, and we are part of nature. Do you know what one of the best ways to explore nature in the forest is? To just go for a walk. And here is our favorite nature camp band to sing about it. Hit it, guys. There's something we talk so to do each and every day.
rock, right? Do you know who else rocks? The naturalist at Five Rivers Metro Parks. A naturalist is a person who studies nature and especially the plants and animals that live in nature. Today, they're gonna to take us on a virtual field trip to explore the forest. Are you ready? Let's do this. Thanks, Ava. I'm here with my friend Joshua and we are going on a nature hike to explore this beautiful forest. And this forest is home to so many different creatures and plants. Also, getting outside and exploring nature can make you feel better, can make you healthier, and even make you smarter. When you're out exploring, some forests may have really big trees, so you want to pay attention to what's around you and make sure you know where you are. Wherever you choose to go hiking, make sure a grown-up knows where you're going. It's always a good idea to carry a water bottle, maybe even a snack too, because even if you're not going too far, you can stay outside longer. Other things I like to carry with me sometimes if I have them are binoculars, maybe even a little jar so that I can catch a creature and look at it and then let it go. But then I always carry some paper or my nature journal with me so that I can record some of the things that I see, but then also draw and write poems. Let's go hike. Well, here in Five Rivers Metro Parks in Dayton, Ohio, there isn't really a lot of creatures and plants that we need to be worried about that will hurt us. But just a few, one of them is stinging nettle. And right here we have, it's really a cool plant, has really neat flowers on it. But then if you look closely at its stem, it has lots of little stinging hairs. And if you brush against them, especially if you're wearing shorts, those little stinging hairs will get into your legs and will sting a little bit. So it's not going to hurt you in the long term, but it can make you itch later. Now, poison ivy might be another plant that you've heard about to be careful around. If you touch this plant, it could give you a rash and make you itchy. A lot of people remember what this plant looks like by saying leaves of three, let it be. But actually in the forest, there are so many plants to explore that have three leaves that are not poison ivy. So one of the best ways to tell if you're looking at poison ivy is to look at how the leaves are coming off of the main stem. Now, unlike a lot of plants that have three leaves that come out opposite from one another, poison ivy actually comes out alternate from one another. So if you see that, you know that you probably are looking at poison ivy. Now, a lot of people might not like poison ivy because of the fact that it can make them itchy, but the reason I really like poison ivy is because in the winter, the birds are able to eat berries that this plant makes when they don't have a lot of food. Earlier, you guys saw how cool it can be to explore a log, and one of my favorite things to do when I'm out in the woods is to flip over logs and see if I can find any creatures living underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip over this log and see if we can find anything. Oh, I don't see anything big under here. I see a couple little bugs, but why don't we try this log over here and see if we find anything. Hmm. Oh, wow, look, there is a salamander. Now I'm going to really quick get my hands wet before I touch the salamander so I don't accidentally wipe off some of his protective slime. So I want to make sure my hands are nice and wet. And now we can take a look at this salamander. Look at this guy. This is a Jefferson mole salamander. And look at those long toes that he has and that beautiful little bit of blue on him. Now, he might seem a little bit bigger than some salamanders that you're used to seeing, maybe when you're out exploring the creek. Um, that's because he's a mole salamander, and they actually live most of their lives in the leaf litter and in the soil. So being under a log is a perfect place for him to spend time. So now we're going to go ahead and return this salamander back to the forest. Now, before we do that, we want to flip over the log where we found him, very gently in case there's any small creatures we didn't see. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back and then we'll let our salamander go right next to it. So we don't accidentally squish him, but he can still go underneath if he wants. Bye salamander. Joshua, what bird is that? Oh, wow. Oh, wow, good find, Aaron. Wow, that is a black-throated green warbler. So cool, just check that guy out. 
And oh, there's a bay-breasted warbler. Wow, you don't see those too often. Is that a black-throated blue? Oh, yes it is. Wow. Oh, and a prothonotary. Prothonotary warbler. Check that out. Oh. Ooh, and check out this red start. An American red start, a lot of people call it. Oh, that's my favorite, a magnolia warbler. Wow, you know, this is a really good spot. It really is. You know, it's very typical in birding that you'll be hiking around and not see a bird for a little while, and then you'll see a bunch of different species all traveling together. Safety in numbers. That is cool. Aaron, check this out. Wow. So whenever you get to a really cool animal that's just kind of out in nature doing its thing, we have to keep in mind that these animals are typically really scared of us. And an animal that is scared of us, that has teeth, can bite us, but just because they want to get us away. So we really should not pick up this animal and just kind of let it control the experience. But let's get a little closer and see what we can find. This is just so cool that we saw this today. This is a common snake that we find out in the woods in Ohio, but we don't get to see them all too often. This is a rat snake. He's got a white chin. If I was to pick him up, you'd see like a checkerboard pattern all the way down his belly. But look at that, really, really, really neat. Sometimes when you get close to a snake, they will stick out their tongue. And they're not trying to make fun of you. They're just smelling you. They're just kind of exploring and trying to figure out who we are, just like we're exploring it. Really neat. We're going to let it go and return back to the forest. Enjoying your water break? Oh, yeah. This is a really good spot. It's got my nice big shady oak right here. So you do know you're sitting next to poop, right? Oh, wow. You know, this isn't poop. This is not poop. This is an owl pellet. Do you know what owl pellets are? No, what are they? They're, so owls, when they eat their food, they can't like digest a whole mouse at once. So they actually separate all the bones and the fur and the skulls, all that stuff. And then they puke it out. And then the rest of the stuff goes in their tummy. But they get rid of this stuff. and. And here's another one. This is really neat. This means that an owl has been sitting way up here in the top of this tree, puking. And we just found it. Let's go ahead and dissect it and see what they ate. All right. All right. All right, we just used our nature journal as kind of a nature exploration table and dissected one of our owl pellets kind of quickly. If we had the right tools, we were going to bring this inside and clean up these things. But this is just incredible. Look at this. Look at this little bone. It's just like so cute. Wow, look how small that is. Yeah, I wonder if it was a part of a leg of a mouse. Because look at this. This is a skull. Check that out. This is where its eyes used to be. Wow. And its front teeth. And then I also saw this right down here. This is the lower jaw. So this kind of fit together kind of like this. And so it would open up its mouth and grind the seeds and things that they like to eat. Pretty cool. There's so many things in just that one little owl pellet. You know, I'm interested. I'm going to take this owl pellet home so that I can dissect it with some water and kind of explore what can be inside it. But here, I'm going to let all of this stuff kind of return back to nature. And really, a best way to do that is to kind of move the leaf litter around. And I'm just going to go ahead and pour it right in here. 
and then cover it with leaves. And so nature is going to go ahead and decompose that and turn it back to dirt. And maybe next year when I'm hiking by, a little plant will be growing here and using some of these little mouse bits. Well, break's over. All right, let's go see what else we can find. A lot of times we are out exploring the forest during the day, but there's a whole bunch of creatures that come out at night during the forest that we might not get to see if we're only going out during the day. So one of the best ways to see what kind of animals are out in our forest is to look for tracks. And a great place to look is in mud, like what's right behind me here. This mud is perfect for recording our animal tracks. Look at these tracks in the mud here. And there's even some bigger ones that look the same over here. I think this is a white-tailed deer, like the skull that we saw earlier. And that would make sense. They're pretty common here in Ohio. And it looks like this deer was traveling this way because its toes are pointing that way. And not too far away, here's a raccoon track. Look at the long fingers. They kind of look like our handprint. And over here we have a coyote track. Coyotes are also fairly common in Ohio, but they actually came here from the west. Look at this track as compared to our raccoon track. It looks kind of different. That's because our coyotes have toe pads that makes different markings in the dirt. Well, thanks for sharing those tracks with me, Erin. You're welcome. So where are we heading now? I don't know. Let's see what's around this corner. Sounds good. Oh, well, this looks different. Wow, look at the trees. They are different. Look how tall they are. You know what these are? These are pine trees. And you know what's under pine trees? Pine, pine cones. Oh, here's one. Wow, this came from the top of the pine tree. And you know, this is the girl part of the tree. Um, so it gets the pollen from the boy part and then it continues to grow and then it creates this pine cone. And so this is where her seeds are made. And then in the springtime, when it starts to get warm, they kind of just open up and all of the seeds fall out. But it's just really super cool looking. You know what, I'm gonna save this for later. Oh, look at this fort. It looks like some kids had a lot of fun. It's a pretty big one too. It reminds me of the forts that I used to make when I was out in nature playing in this perfect playground. But do you know who does nature play the best in our area? Is Adventure Central. Let's check in with them and let them show you how it's done. Thanks Erin and Joshua. We're here at Adventure Central in our forest. We're wondering where our teens ran off to. Hey Peaches, why don't we go find them? Let's go. What are you doing? I'm playing Thicket with the teens. Oh, I love to play Thicket. What is Thicket? Thicket is a hide and seek game that we play on the trails. My friends are out there somewhere. I am the predator and they are my prey. That sounds fun. Just like animals and insects when they're trying to blend in with their environments. Lexi is going to walk through the thicket and try to find everyone who is hiding. When she finds someone, she'll say their name and then they are it with her. They're going to walk through the thicket and try to find everyone else. Aha, I found you. Ah! Oh, Although our teens are playing Thicket today, there's so many fun things to do outside, like fort building, fairy houses, or even a nature scavenger hunt. So now's the time to get outside and play. Thank you for sharing. Those are some pretty awesome ideas. They sure are. I'll have to try some of those out when I come out exploring tomorrow. Let's go see what else we can find. All right, let's go. I'm really glad we came out here today. Me too. It really makes me feel good spending time out here. It's just so peaceful.
Oh, wow. Check these guys out. Wow, they run, I've never seen backpacks that huge. What are you guys doing? Backpacking. Backpacking? What's backpacking? When we carry everything that we need on our backs to spend a night out in the woods. Wow, you guys spending the night out here? Yeah. Like, or the whole weekend? Yeah. Wow, you guys picked a great weekend to do it. What's in your backpack? Our tent, our sleeping bag, our sleeping pack, our food, our clothes. Wow, that sounds really cool. I'm going to have to try that sometime. Well, thanks. You guys yeah. take care. We'll see you on the trail. <laughs> Well, thanks, Erin. That was a lot of fun. It really was. And, you know, we got to see so many amazing things out here on the trails. And I bet all of you have local forests that you can explore as well. Just make sure you check with the parent first. And after you're done exploring, if you can remember, like we were having our fingers in all the owl puke and on creatures and stuff, it's always good to wash your hands when you're done exploring, especially before you eat. But also another thing that I'd like you for you to try is to just get out in a forest and sit and be still and just listen to all of the sounds, feel the wind on your face. Get out that nature journal and just kind of put down on paper what comes to you because amazing things happen when you're in a peaceful forest. Yeah, so get out and explore and who knows, maybe we'll meet you out on the trail. Bye. Take care. Thanks, Aaron and Joshua. That was so cool. Okay, the snake was a little scary to me, but the forest is really, really amazing. Oh, and thanks for remembering to get those pine cones for us. We're gonna use them later. And you are so right, Aaron. Getting out of the house and exploring nature can totally help you unplug and feel amazing too. Let's check in with Nature Cat and friends as they try to get Hal to realize the importance of connecting with nature. But first, here's a word from today's nature sponsor, Styx. Nature Cat is brought to you today by Styx. Yes, Styx. Bend them, stack them, break them, build a fence with them, a house, a skyscraper. Make a stick man, stick woman, stick kid, stick dog. Make music with them, play a game with them. So pick up some sticks today. Sticks by nature. Okay, okay, I'm outside. I'm all good now, okay? I'll just be heading back home so I can go build my squeak source Rex. But we just got here, Hal. Now come on, let's go for a nice walk and let nature help you feel better. Ugh, this is so unfair. I should be inside with my Squeakosaurus Rex. Why don't we just focus on other things for a while, Hal? Like what? How about the gentle breeze blowing on your face? Oh, hey, that does feel kind of nice. <laughs> the kind of tickles. <laughs> now take a deep breath through your nose and tell Dr. Daisy what you smell. Ooh, I smell fresh cut grass. Ah, oh, grass! Oh, and I smell lavender. I smell lilacs and lilies of the valley. I always like to smell flowers for my nature dose. The scent just clears my head and makes me feel so happy and naturey and all at the same time. You know what I'm saying, Hal? I sure do, Daisy. <sighs> oh, did you hear that? Ooh, ooh, I heard it. It was a spring peeper. Well, it sounds to me like a squeak toy. I gotta get back home. I need to finish Squeakosaurus Rex. Hold on, Hal. Let Dr. Daisy do a follow-up examination. Hmm. Oh, no. You're not cured yet. I'm not? Nope. You need a stronger dose of nature. Or maybe just a different kind of dose. Everybody's different. Yep, all right, this feels good. Nature work. Now it's time to go back home and finish up my Squeakosaurus Rex. Bye, nature. Not yet, Hal. First, just lie here and feel your weight sink into the grass. Oh, yeah, man, this is how I do my nature dose. Relax in the grass. Forget your troubles. Come on, get happy. It is relaxing. 
Nature is just what the doctor ordered. Oh, hey, look at the clouds. Watching the clouds gently float by is my nature prescription. Hey, that cloud looks like a kite. Oh, and that one looks like a train. Oh, those clouds look like cheese. <laughs> yeah, cheese cloud. This was a great idea, Dr. Daisy. Hal seems very relaxed. Oh, look, that cloud looks just like... Wait, it looks just like... Squeakosaurus Rex! Boo, I gotta go! Wait, Hal, you clearly haven't had enough nature yet. Boo, it doesn't matter. I have to go finish Squeakosaurus Rex. Wait, guys, Hal needs more nature. We have to stop him. Tally-ho! So do you need more nature, too? Well, you might want to consider this. Did you know that kids who connect with nature are actually better learners? Yeah, they are smarter. And when we spend more time with nature, it totally makes us happier. Because we are connected to something that's bigger than ourselves. So rather than just focusing on one thing, such as a computer screen, get out and get into nature. It expands our minds and helps us be more creative. Hey, let's get creative with nature right now. These are some pine cones that Aaron and Joshua brought back from the hike. Let's use them for a nature activity. And you can find some pine cones to try this at home. They're little pine cone guys and gals. They're my pine cone, pine cone pals. Hey! Now it's time for you to make your own pine cone pals. Here's what you'll need. Strong glue, tape, twine, or mounting putty. Paper, pencils or crayons, scissors. Pine cones, of course. You can find them outside by a pine tree near you. Or they can also be bought online or at most craft stores. You can also use materials like googly eyes and felt. Step one, bring a basket or cloth bag to carry your materials and collect lots of different kinds of natural materials, more than you think you'll need. But make sure that you only use materials that a grown-up says are okay to use. Step two, time to organize. Set up a workstation by laying out what you found. Oh, how sweet is that? So cool. Step three, design time. Make a simple drawing of what you want your pinecone pal to look like. Step four, time to create our pinecone pals using glue, tape, mounting putty, or twine. Bringing us to step five. It's all in the details. Add details and layers by gluing the small pieces together first because they are easier to attach to the pine cone that way. Make sure to let the glue dry as you go. Step six, more pine cone pals! Step seven, picture time! Time to take a photo of your pine cone pals. Remember to share your pals with nature cat and friends. Pinecone Pals are just one of the ways that you can get creative with nature. For more ideas, be sure to check out our website. So today we took a virtual walk through the forest with the Five Rivers Metro Parks naturalists. But some people like to experience nature in the fast lane. On today's recreation adventure, we are going to ride along and see what it's like to go mountain biking through the forest. So gear up and let's hit the trails. Let's go mountain biking at Mamba. I want to explore the forest. Right? Mountain biking is so much fun. Five Rivers Metro Parks has lots of different trails to explore. 
miles of them. There are trails for everyone from beginners to pros. Maybe you can check it out sometime. It is so much fun. We are so glad you joined us for another great day at camp. We learned a lot about the forest and the many, many ways we can connect with nature. In a forest of 100,000 trees, no two leaves are the same, and no two journeys along the same path are the same either. That's why in the forest, there's always a new world waiting to be discovered. As you know, at the end of each day at camp, we take a virtual trip to some of the national parks found here in America. We can explore and observe with our pretend binoculars. All you have to do is move close enough to the screen so that when you're looking through your binoculars, you can't see anything but the screen. If you have not made your binoculars yet, you can use your hands like this. So let's explore, and we hope to see you again for more fun at Nature Camp. Bye! Thank you.